Welcome back, I'm Kim Bailey, she's Fuliana Osborne and this is Inside Exec. Today we're going to explore performance reviews. Now, Fuliana has just reminded me that we have touched on it briefly with some of our guests and in terms of other topics that we've talked about. But today I want to present to you a different way of thinking about performance reviews. And this has come to me from Lyle Tard, who was a guest not so long ago when we're doing this recording. And Lyle talked about his main topic of conversation was about servant leadership. And he does have now a weekly resource that comes out. And I will put the link to that on the bottom of this page. In terms of his background, those of you who haven't heard him speak, Lyle came from decades and decades of the US Air Force as a trainer in the Air Force, and he was very much involved with performance reviews. And he talks in this most recent article about this different approach to performance reviews, because performance reviews, as most of us know, have always been conducted on, here's the criteria, this is how we want you to perform, these are the competencies we want you to have, was the next development of that, and then, then a grading system, and then we have a peer review, and we have a personal review, and we have a supervisor review, and all of that information supposedly leads us to set new targets for the next period of time. The time for performance reviews often varies as well. I know that if, in a recent organisation I had some work with, that, that they're doing it every three months, and that's a, a very conscious decision based on the work that is performed there. But more often than not, they're an annual thing. And to me, 12 months is a long time to be thinking about your performance. But if we look at the way Lyle looks at it, 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 it's a, a better management tool. So what Lyle suggests is that for performance reviews, we base the information and the discussion on three things. What you did, how you did it, and the impact it had. And you just talk about those three things. And so if you, for instance, you were doing it in a 12-month period of time, you knowing that they were the three things that you had to address, you could just keep a diary almost of those things, of, of what you did, how you did it, and the impact it had. And that'd be a nice, neat way of recording your view of your performance over time. It could also be an interesting way for a supervisor to do it. And in terms of a peer review, the things that will stand out will be their view of what you did, how you did it, and the impact it had. And that might be a very different view, particularly the impact, than you might have yourself. For example, you might think that something you did didn't have much impact. But for an outsider, for a customer, for for someone else who's doing the peer review, they might think that it changed their interaction completely. And so it gives you a different perspective to the way that performance reviews have been done up to this point. What Lyle also suggests is that you don't just look at it in terms of the operational activities, but you look at it in terms of your life activities as well. So sometimes what you did at work, how you did it, and the impact it had might have a very different impact at work to the impact it had on you personally. You might have grown out of an activity that didn't work, for example. So I throw that out there for comment. I really like that last bit. Um, I like it all, but I like that last bit a lot because I believe that by you reflecting on on that point, whether it worked or didn't work, how did it affect you personally, is something that we don't do naturally. That's a good to keep in front of mind. I like that. I like the idea of um, what you did, how you did it, and the impact it had. I would say that happens continuously throughout And for a person to collect that information, I'm working with one of my clients who is in in a medium-sized organization. They don't do reviews like in in the sense of goals and, and achievements and all of that like the traditional way. So what happens is... The way they work is they give feedback as they go, so which is all mm. in time, relevant, etc. An example of that would have been the person worked on a project and the boss or the boss's boss or the CEO will, will send a note saying, that was fantastic, I like this, this and this. Also, in the future, it would be good if we consider that, that and that. And 
you might want to blah 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 so in that if you collect that obviously then you can answer all those things about what you did how you did it the impact it had mm. on on you personally as well as everyone else so you learned the person that is doing that it is time consuming because you're doing it as you go but it's acted upon and and make life better for the next activity and the next activity i think the most important part of the exercise because you'll always remember what you did and you'll always remember how you did it for the most part yeah. but the impact it had is the yeah. the area where it becomes very subjective so you can write down the impact that it had yeah. for you but getting that feedback from others about the impact it had for them yes. is really important in terms of how you perceive that overall activity then just remembering what is the idea i mean with loyal he's as you said Kim is very very experienced and and has so much uh, information to draw on is how is it really is the whole driver behind performance um, reviews or performance management whatever you want to call it is to make that person grow really and if we keep that definitely focus is yeah, when feedback good bad or indifferent if it's structured to make the person grow it's really good and appreciated even though sometimes think i would like to you know have got everything right without feedback but that's not possible none of us no many how many years of experience we can do things better and we will learn as we go and we'll continue to do so so i, I like the the personalized touch and and the bit about how it's perceived and the impact it has by doing that in an organization too as you're working you're thinking about the impact <laughs> not after the event but you're thinking oh if i did that oh no i think that's going to put them under stress and that's going to undo this other thing if i do that that's going to help them do x and yeah. so you're thinking of the impact because it is now if you do the organization performance sorry review like that then it is something in your mind all the time i think one of the things that you just mentioned then that we probably need to emphasize is about the performance review being for the person not for the organization because i think there are very many organizations who use it as a control mechanism whether it's increase in pay promotion whatever else it is or management of underperformance but the performance review should be a two-way street it should be about am i getting the best out of this person for the organization and is the organization providing the best it can for this person and so that's a, a, just a, a important reminder to people about looking at how you use performance reviews what are they really for and have you missed the point of them because you've had them in the organization for a long time and this is just the way it's done and this is the results we get and so it, it becomes a rote exercise rather than a development exercise for both the person and the organization Oh, it's pretty good. I think that probably covers the, the things that we wanted to talk about in terms of, of a, a fresh new look at performance reviews. Please have a listen and a look at Lyle's information and think about it in terms of your organisation and or the performance reviews that for which you are subject. But for now, I'm Kim Bailey. She's Fuliana Osborne and this is Inside Exec. <laughs>